Chapter 10. The Living Information. Christ is the single unified being whose consciousness all share. He is the being who sacrificed, for a time, his unified sense of identity, and cloaked himself in the matter of a planet that a species might share his life. He went to sleep to dream an evolutionary process that would leave him, upon awakening, clothed in a physical body comprised of many human cells. Christ's first coming was the first time since life appeared on Earth that the totality of consciousness woke up in the frame of a man. This was Jesus of Nazareth. Through Jesus, Christ walked the Earth and began to prepare the human population. He taught the matter-bound humans of the Roman Empire to do the opposite of all their habitual inclinations, love your enemy, give away all your material possessions, be humble, and so forth. He taught people how to break every single one of the governing principles which Satan was at that time using to regulate the known world. After Christ's ascension, his followers organized his teachings and the story of his life into a book. This book was written during a period of history when human beings had no science, no concept of evolution, no hologrammatic theory, and no understanding of any but the most rudimentary facts of existence on this third planet from the star they call Sun. Nevertheless, it proved to be a living bombshell to the world governments that were in power at the time of its release. Satan knew that he had to give it his full treatment if it were not to totally destroy him. He knew that if people began acting on the information it contained, his influence would be ended. So he devised a clever scheme for using the very power of this information to prevent its actual application. He organized a vast bureaucratic structure around the simple teachings of Jesus. He mobilized thousands of official interpreters into an elitist priesthood and sent them out to the masses of people to bore them, to confuse them, and to otherwise prejudice them against the message of Christ. He did not care if everyone worshipped Christ superficially, just so long as they continued to worship material possessions in actual fact. He did not care if everyone gave lip service to the teachings of Jesus, just so long as no one tried to live them. His primary maneuver for distracting humans from the message of Christ was to emphasize the messenger and the mechanics of the message, while disregarding the substance of what was taught. The call to take personal responsibility and to implement Christ's teachings in daily life became lost in crucifix worship and later in scripture worship. The message of Jesus, to disengage oneself from the influence of matter, and become filled with the Holy Spirit, became buried under a catalogue of religious verbiage and dogmatic interpretation. Self-righteousness was encouraged in the name of the Lord, and many died defending interpretations that had nothing to do with the simple truths of Jesus. It is easy for the self-righteous of this day to feel smug superiority when mention is made of the Inquisition and the Crusades, but it is only the names and the places that have changed. Everywhere my eyes see, and everywhere my ears hear, those who claim to follow in the ways that I have taught are flaunting their religious superiority in the faces of those who speak with different words, as a woman might flaunt a cape of unique design. There is nothing more sorrowful than to observe this behavior among those who claim to live by my truth. Have two thousand years not educated your race to the absurdity of conceptual argument? Every language that my teachings have been translated into reflects but another variation on my original meaning. Even within the context of a single language, there are those who hear different meanings in the very same phrase. Those who extrapolate with the rational mind rather than with the love in their hearts will find meanings as many and as varied as the sands of the sea. Do you not know by now that it is not the words that matter, but the life of the spirit behind them? If you cut off the love in your heart to another because of conceptual differences, I will cut you off from my life, like a pruner would cut a branch that has no merit. 
The pattern of every leaf is not the same. Every branch does not leave the trunk at the same place in the same manner. You are all brothers and sisters in consciousness. Do not separate yourselves according to the ways you like to think about things. What is happening is far beyond your childish ideas. In the end, it will only be those who have abandoned their conceptual preferences who will understand the truth of love incarnate. I am Christ. I am coming this day through the atmosphere of your consciousness. I am asking you to open the door of your reason, to allow me into your heart. Let me spring up from the ashes of your ignorance like the flame that burned brightly in the simplicity of your childhood. Look to the Bible of love, my living presence in your heart, rather than to the wordy debates of little minds on the written word of old. Man is not impeccable in his past, but God's word has never changed. It is a word of love and a word of life. It unites and rejoins all who hear it in the truth of being. Its verbal translations are multiple and varied, and if they can lead you to the love and truth that lives behind them, good, use them. But if they separate and divide you in the many interpretations of reason, cast them aside and listen with your inner ear, there I inform you directly. Hear my word through the love of all that is. Do not hold your mind in tight conceptual patterns, but relax and open it as a rose opens her blossoms. Discover who you are in God's sight. These are wondrous times to be alive. Those who split these words, or the words of old, will be but doing the work of Satan. Listen to the living word of God in your heart, and be at peace. Until the time when all human ideas fall away and you enter the secret place where God's plans are revealed, do not bicker with each other over the limitations of your understanding. If any find fault with these words, and say that this is not right, or that is not right, quickly agree with them and be about the Father's business. No words will ever be right in the reason of men. What I bring this day is more than words. I bring the living information of life. Accept it and the love in which it is offered. I am the bridegroom, spoken of old. I came to you first through a man named Jesus. Your race was not fully prepared then for my coming, so I set the seeds in that age for this event that is before you. You should be prepared for these teachings. I planted their seeds on the hills of Galilee. New men and new women had to be prepared through the years of Christian civilization, for the bridegroom could not put the new wine into old jugs. But rejoice! The millennia of your fasting are over, the bridegroom returns. Let us prepare the feast. Take and eat of this truth, for it is my body, and drink of this love, for it is my blood. I have come to establish a new relationship with your species and the ways of old shall be no more. See how all things are fulfilled, I am the sower and you are my seed. In ancient times I have fertilized the earth. Now the planet has borne fruit and the harvest shall begin. I will take the gifts of this great season for the containers of my own consciousness. If you believe these things, it will be so for you. If you have the faith of but a grain of mustard seed, you will eventually be restored, and the greater the faith, the sooner the healing. Whoever will come after me will have to die to all definitions of self, take up my spirit, and follow along the lines of my vibrational field. Whoever clings to his definition of self will lose his identity when that definition is no more, but whoever shall relinquish all definitions for my sake, and for the entry of my consciousness, the same shall share in my eternal life. All who receive their impressions of the world as a small child receives them, without judgment, with love and acceptance, will receive my awareness. And all who receive me, receive as well, the consciousness of the one who sent me, the consciousness of the Creator Himself. This is the greatest gift. But it is not a gift that you keep to yourself. It only enters where it is being given out. It does not stay with you except as it flows through you. The more you are able to give, the more will you receive. 
As you gain in proficiency and become a channel for my grace, the torrent passing through you will wear away all remnant of your former condition. You will find yourself functioning on reality levels that at this time you would not understand were I to tell you of them. Whoever learns to function in this way is like the man who built the house of his identity upon the firm rock of that which is eternal. Do not continue to draw identity from that which is soon to pass away, but build your identity as I am now defining you, as my own being in the context of your environment. I will come to you first with the consciousness of a child, for it is thus that you will learn again of your world. Whoever receives this child consciousness for my sake, will receive he who has sent me later when the child is grown in spirit. Receive as little children and enter my life. The foxes have their holes, the birds, their nests, but there are few humans of this generation where I can rest my perceptions. I created you to be the temples of my awareness, but you have filled my dwelling place with material desires and driven out my spirit with the clamoring of thieves. Waste no time in vain regret, but open to my love and make the simple change. If you ask me the way, I will not turn you down. No father would give a stone to his child who asked for life. Do not be too proud to pray, for my eyes do see and my ears do hear. There is not a child on earth who sincerely calls upon my attention without receiving it in full. Many of this generation consider themselves too sophisticated to pray, but I tell you, all of these will be praying before this transition is over. No one who is divided within himself will survive the times ahead. They are times of integration and wholeness. The life of the body is the I. When your I is single it is, I, who am present. But when your I is fragmented, then your body begins to die. Take heed then, and identify with the life of the body, and not with the matter of earth. When your eye is single, your body will be full of life and no part of it will know disease or death. When you fragment your identity, you cut off parts of your body from my nurture. This is the cause of disease. I have come to do away with the materializing tendencies that have accompanied the formation of your species. I have come to give you the gift of eternal life. I warn all those that deal over much with complexities that these are of Satan. My way is a simple way. It does not require rituals to matter. One who unknowingly breaks my patterns will be taught patiently, but one who knowingly breaks my patterns is sinning against the spirit of life. For that sin, the wages are death. Do not worry about life what you are to eat, what you are to put on. The life is more than matter, and the body more than a vehicle. Look at how the trees survive. Observe the birds who neither sow nor reap. Are you not of greater awareness than these? Then why is it that you worry about these things? Do you think that by your thoughts you can lengthen your life an hour or a day? Life is not here to be governed by thoughts, but thoughts are here to be directed by life. Get behind me, Satan, into the past where you belong. Remove your tired thoughts from the minds of men. I bring them the thought of life, informing every atom of their bodies with all that is required in the moment of my presence. If God provides the foliage of the earth such a beautiful definition of his expression, how much more will he give to you who are made in his image and likeness? Beware of many possessions. A man's life does not come from what he possesses, but from what does not possess him. Look for the kingdom within and all without shall be transformed. I wish to share my consciousness with all, but those who are not prepared on the day of my coming will only receive as much as they are able, according to the manner in which they are accustomed to receiving. Who do you think will receive the gifts of my fullest awareness? It will be the good and faithful servants who have prepared for my coming. I am coming only now to bring life to the earth. The mother has kindled it before me and approximated the outward forms of my design. But I come only now to baptize in the name of the Lord. 
I am coming now to animate matter in such a way as has not been done since before the beginning. I will baptize all species with my own definitions. I will inform all of their true function. And yes, my little ones, the animals will talk. Has it not occurred to you that in the garden of long ago it was not I who named the animals, but Adam, the son of matter? And has it not occurred to you further that only the Creator could possess the power necessary to bless into full life? My level of vibrational penetration was sufficient in those days to quicken the species to an elementary level of mortal life, but the intensity of my full presence was not yet. So, in the shadow of the event, I appointed Adam my representative. And in the past, before the animals were given spirit definitions, Adam named them in the nature of their forms and in the nature of their physical patterns. It is these that run and play among you today. I will transform them, just as I will transform you, into something much more wonderful. You should not dismiss too quickly the childish visions and primitive superstitions prevalent among the less educated of your species. For while these simple concepts certainly do not represent the entirety of the approaching phenomenon, they do, nevertheless, embody archetypal characteristics of it, some of which will be dramatized for your benefit. Too many of you possess an intellectual snobbery which prevents the uninhibited expression of my spirit. The animation of some of your discarded mythology will be your swiftest cure. You think I have come to bring unity and peace to the earth, and this is true, but to accomplish this, I must first divide the vibrational fields that are currently overlapping. I bring the sword of division that will separate all the elements into their proper places. When you see a cloud rise up out of the west, you know that a shower is near, and when you feel a wind from the south, you know it will soon be hot. Why is it that you can see and hear all these portents of change, yet not know that the kingdom of heaven is at hand? Do not be so caught up in your expectations and personal interpretations that you fail to see the kingdom until it is upon you. I am disappointed in this civilization, for you have had my word spoken to you from your youth, yet understood it not. Many that have my teachings quick upon their tongues will, nevertheless, be last in my kingdom because of their pride. And many who have not studied the written word of God, but who have consistently loved their fellow men, will be first. He who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who makes himself a servant to humanity will be appointed to my most trusted positions. It has been said in the prophecies that the time of these things would not be until, the lightning that lighteth one particle that was bound under heaven, shineth forth and lighteth another part under heaven, and that when this took place, the coming was near at hand. Those who have ears, let them hear. Those who have eyes, let them read the word of God illuminated by the lightning that was once bound in one particle of matter. Let them know that the time is here. Waste no time in indecision, but set out at once upon the path you are to take. Identify with my life, accept the gifts that I bring, or take your stance in the dying world. There are many in the camp of Satan this very day who will repent and share in my eternal life. But those who are lukewarm, believing neither this nor that, will be too much associated with the materializing patterns to break free when these tendencies are removed from human levels of consciousness. Many who sup with Satan this very hour will be the means through which I change the world. But many who now loudly proclaim the praise of the Lord will be the very ones to deny my energies of love and life and the very ones to cling most desperately to their fears and convictions. Yet it does not have to be this way. The energies that are enfolding your planet are energies of life. There is nothing that needs to stand between them and their free expression through you. There is nothing that needs to stand between you and yourself, between creator and created, save time, and if you will come now and take my hand, together we will banish it and become as one. The stewards that I left in ancient times to guide and look after your race, you disregarded and killed. 
so I came to you myself through Jesus of Nazareth. You crucified me then, for my collective coming was not understood and the forces of materialization were yet strong. This time I come to you in might and glory. You shall not disregard me again, for it is written that the stone the builders rejected turned out to be the most important stone of all. The builders, the earthly patterns, who were molding matter to conform to my unconscious dreams, had so little idea of my true nature that they saw as worthless the most important state of consciousness that had ever rested upon a member of your species. Yet this state of consciousness is to be the only state of consciousness that is to survive into the next age. Do not reject it because of its apparent lack of survival value. Receive it, and learn a new definition of survival. It will dance in your circuitry and spark your physical body into eternal life. This state of consciousness is the consciousness of the being of life himself. It is the current your circuitry was designed to operate on. At this time in your history, you are like an electrical system that has just come off the assembly line but has yet to be plugged in. It will not be much longer, however. In truth, this generation will not pass away until it has come to pass. The momentum of my coming is as irreversible as the rising and setting of the sun. The Son of God is destined to go as I have determined, and trouble will ensue for all who try to obstruct the unfoldment. These plans were not made yesterday. These things have been decided of old, even before I quickened the first life upon this planet. It would be well if you accepted the changes of my coming. Enter gracefully into the patterns that I have prepared for you. Don the garments of my design. They are bodies of light. Your present physical bodies are like unto them as a light without current is like unto one that is lit. Do not continue to define yourselves but allow me to define you in my service. What you will experience will so far surpass your expectations that life in these shadow years will soon be forgotten and left behind, as is a dream that has little meaning. This life is your own life. These plans are your own plans. On this channel, I speak to you in the second person because for many at this time, this is the most effective means of receiving this information. But do not be deceived by the dichotomy implied in this mode. I am your life. You are my expression. I am the vine, you are the branches. I am the consciousness, you are my focus. There is no separation, except in time perhaps, and in my presence, time does not exist. I have the clarity now, while you sleep yet in darkness. But I am calling you earnestly to awaken. I would share with you the totality of my perceptions. Chapter 11. Education of Spirit. In times when fear patterns predominate, the laws that humans require are many and complex. But when those patterns are broken up, as is shortly to be, all human laws shall be abolished. In the presence of my spirit, there is but one law, and that is the law of love. Love all, love what is, love yourself as you are, and love me as I express through you. No matter how diverse expressions appear to be, realize that they are all differentiations of your own essence in various contexts. Love them all. See the unity of life. The law of love is more than a law, it is the way of life. What do you think causes the sprouts in the spring? What do you think brings fruit to the branch? It is all love, all life, calling out the potential of this planet. Be in and of this love, and the many confusing laws of old will be absorbed in the glorious expression of life on earth. It is written that the day will come when men will no longer live on the bread of matter, but on the living word of God. A tune. That day is now. The nourishing information awaits within. Eat of it in ways that you will not understand with the rational mind. Partake of infinite energy. Do not reason over it and trouble your hearts and say it is by this mechanism or that mechanism. 
but arise, take up my identity in your being, and enter the house that I have prepared for you in my manifest body. Follow the direction of informing life. It rises up within you like the feeling you got when you were in love and your beloved drew near. It quickens your heart this very moment. Trust in it. It will not lead you astray. Be impeccable in all that you do, however small a thing, and in that perfection express my fullness. On the hills of Galilee, I taught you to cast out devils in my name. But this is a new age and a new generation, and to those of you who are to work with me in the preparation of this planet. I will say this as well, cast out definitions in my name. For it is by definitions of a multitudinous kind that the spirit of life, bubbling so gently out of the earth, is held in the restraining halls of Satan. In the coming age, it is to be by my definitions alone that matter is informed. On vibrational channels of being, I am broadcasting these definitions even now. If you silence your thoughts and attune to your inner signals, you will begin to expand into my conceptions, into a new interpretation of reality. Find the doorway to this reality through your heart. Enter and be still. Find out what manner of being you are. I have been beaming my signals to you steadily ever since you first left the garden, but their message has been faint among the loud clamoring of your many words. Now, with my approach, these signals are increasing in amplitude. Soon it will be they who drown out the many words. Tune into these signals and learn about yourselves. There is much that you have forgotten. If an acorn falls to the ground among many other acorns, and becomes so involved with its relationships to the other acorns that it clings ever to its definition of itself as an acorn, then that acorn will never die as an acorn, and will never discover that in God's definition, it is not an acorn, but a mighty oak. Do not be like the acorn in this parable and cling to your larval self-images until you are rotting and crawling with worms. Release your childish conceptions and allow the Creator to define you in His terms. Trust in God for your survival needs and you will neither starve nor be found lacking. See first the Kingdom of Heaven, and through that seeing, you will notice survival factors you had previously overlooked. They are too close to your eyes. Your mind is still looking for complexities. Throughout history, you have been struggling so hard to survive, by your definition of survival, that you have forgotten why you want to survive. When you rediscover why you want to survive, you will rediscover me. I am your reason for survival. I am the spark of life within you, expressing my universality through your environment. It is I who want to survive and find expression through you. You want to stay on Earth, because it is the most beautiful spring morning of all your history, and you are in love in love with the spirit that sings in your heart, in love with the glorious planet that clothes you in her matter. Do not continue to sleep, lest in dreaming you miss all. That is taking place. If you hear these words now, and feel my peace as your thoughts begin to trouble you less, do not rush off right away in joy, but stay for a time where you are. Be still until you are empowered from on high. These first ripples you feel are just a hint of what is to come. When the Holy Spirit has fully touched you, you will know what I know, see what I see, and be what I am. Await the fuller coming in your heart. Then when you speak, your words will have more significance because they will be in full accord with your vibrational pattern. Few will listen to you preach a gospel of love if they sense the fear in your heart. Be still and be quiet. My spirit cannot come when minds are full. If this message cannot be verified by your own experience in this moment, it will do little good. My message is one of peace, harmony, wholeness. I am restoring you to a state of health you have not known since before the projection of physical vehicles. I am awakening the state of consciousness we once shared as one. I am offering you the gift of myself. 
I promise you that if you receive me, you will receive the totality of all that is as well, for I and the Father are one. If you believe in these words, understand clearly, it is not these words that you believe in, but the living reality that these words represent. The true communication is in your heart. There I commune directly. Unless you die to what has been and are born anew into this communion, you will not be able to share in all these things with us. Do not define yourself in mortal terms. My message is a message of action. It is not something to be taken down from the shelf and dusted off on special occasions. Whoever learns to see through the eyes of Christ has learned to see what is real in a sea of illusion. If you are full of your own definitions, how will you receive mine? When you give, do not give to those who may, perchance, repay you someday, for this is not true giving. But give to those who you know will never repay you except in spirit, this is payment enough. When good works are done through your physical form, turn aside all praise and say, it is not this form that is responsible, but one much greater than this form could ever contain in entirety. My form is but the agent of the Lord. Praise Him directly, and do not emphasize the forms through which He works. For I am the doer of all that will now be done. You are my deeds. I make my home in your body, mind and heart. Make it a home of prayer, that I might enter and reside. My coming is like the yeast that raises up the dough. This moment my spirit is awakening in the minds and hearts of the simple, the innocent and the sincere the world over. Under the earth, I am spreading a living network of vibrational roots that are sprouting up with my consciousness in the awareness patterns of humans in every country, every community and every household where even a little love is to be found. Wherever there is even a trace of love, I grow and multiply and spread until all the atmosphere vibrates with the eternal nowness of my presence. The time scale of my coming is subjective. You can experience the reality of the process as soon as you are capable of sustaining the vision in your heart. The coming will not be experienced by the species as a whole until the Christmas of your naming defining, but on an individual level it will vary. As I enter human events, the intensity of my bio-gravitational field will cause time to bubble and warp. In the midst of the past, islands of the future coming will arise. For a while, you will have the old and the new existing side by side. From within the appearance of history, it will seem that a number of factors cause the phenomena associated with my coming. There will be logical, rational proof that certain influences have led up to and produced what is taking place. In truth, however, I come at my own inclination, in my own way. The intensity of my vibrational field is sufficient to adjust reality before it. This is what history is all about. Naturally, your events will converge, like the meridians at the poles, to meet me in the light. In love or in fear, all things will greet me there. If you are sincere in wanting to understand this, become as little children. It will be the children, who care little for the laws of physics, but who eagerly await the animal's gift of speech, who will be most comprehensively informed of each and every new development. They will joyfully ride the fluctuations of the approaching energy field with the grace of surfers balancing lightly on the waves. What is happening is not so hard to understand. Many simple souls will grasp it at once, while many wise in the ways of the world will frown and wrinkle their brows. The wisest in the ways of the material realms, however, the physicists, have already begun to suspect what is happening. Many others of their discipline will discover me shortly, and in the last days, many of their kind will be converted and take to spreading the word of the Lord. It will be the physicist, the anthropologist and the astronomer, who stand with the children and animals in the manger of matter, waiting for my consciousness to be born. I am the life of the Father dancing in the clay, but the life of the Father must be joined by the consciousness of the Father if the organism is to achieve immortality. 
So I come and knock upon the door of your heart. Come dance this dance with me. Come sing this song. I sing in the presence of God, the song of eternal now. Up and down the length and breadth of eternity, my voice echoes in jubilation and delight. Awaken out of your historical slumber and join those who are already working to usher in this new reality. And do not think ill of those whom you will first meet. I know whom I have chosen, and the harvesters I have sent into the fields of humankind are as varied and as real as the people I have sent them to harvest. Know each other, not by outward form, but by the love radiated in their presence. I have come, not to harvest a denomination, but to harvest all nations. I care little for the concepts endemic to this or that segment of the species, but I care much for the love that lives wherever there are pure in heart. I am symbolized by the conjunction of longitudinal and latitudinal, by the sign of the cross. I unite all in a unity of time and space, a unity of creator and creation. In the fire of my love, I melt all division before me. I am the winds of change and I bring the breath of eternal life. The seasons of humankind are ended now, and the season of unified man is to begin. I am the new wine that this generation has been designed to receive. I am the resurrected Christ come joyfully to dwell in the hearts of men. Open to the new. Open to the impossible. Open to the reality that has stood for so long just outside the darkness of your perceptions. I am the one who has been surrounding your culture. I am the one who has been surrounding your history. It was I who taught in Galilee and healed the sick and brought the dead in spirit to life. For two thousand years I have been preparing you for this moment. Awaken to my presence. Awaken to the reality that your history could not conceal but your foolishness could forget. Awaken to yourself, for this day I create you in my image and in my likeness, with the breath of my own body and the life of my own being. Dance in the way of my patterns. Flow with the rivers of my love. They encircle your planet like a vast network of criss-crossing, pulsating, flashing, flowing arteries of light and life. They carry the wonderful news that the child of matter is to be heir to the creator of all that ever was, all that is, and all that ever shall be. Do not try to pour this living information into the old jugs of your rational conceptions, for if you do, I will burst the skins and spill to the ground to quicken the very rocks instead. Nothing that even the wisest among your race could hold in conception would have the strength and flexibility to contain this information. After this day, the words that I send you will no longer be in danger of melting and running into the patterns of your conceptions. I will give you just a few more and then I will meet you inside, and we will sit around the fire of my love, where it is warmer than these snowy pages and chilly words. In the presence of your inner being, I bring you the words of informing life. They are unlike words of paper and ink. Some few of them will be put to paper and ink and the words of men will ring with a power they have not known since the days of old. But this new information is not additional data that you will act upon. It is, rather, the very reality of your new nature. You are not to act upon my information in the future, you are to be my information yourselves. You are to be my will in action, my very deeds. I am as alive, as unique, as appropriate and as changing, yet as constant and as steady, as the life that rises in the flowers or sings in the rains of spring upon your rooftops. I come from the Father now to bring you his definition, to release you from the limitations of the past. I come to you from within as well as from without. I come to you when the guards of fear and reason are looking the other way. I slip in, in moments when you are grateful or happy. Wake up. I sing, for the time of the new is at hand, and all things are to be different from what they have been. See what I have in store. Believe nothing any more, for I am the source of eternal knowledge and henceforth I will rise up within you like a spring that will never run dry. 
In the moment of your need will I inform you of everything you need to know. It has always been thus, but in these days the winds of life blow stronger than before. The Creator approaches. Trust all that is and is to be. Chapter 12. An Open Ending and a New Beginning. In after times, you will come to think of the beginning of the Age of Discovery as your own real beginning. In a sense, this will be true, for it will indeed be the beginning of your coherent functioning as a unified physical organism independent of the mother planet. When the collectivity of your being considers its experience in the terms of an individual lifetime, you will think of all the years of your history up until the coming shortly after the turn of the second millennium AD, as being years of darkness, years spent in the womb. You will remember nothing about them. When, in maturity, you come to reflect upon the millennium that has been labeled the period of planetary awakening, you will look upon these years as the years of your childhood, years of vehicular formation. You will remember a little about them. What you will encounter, and what you will experience, in the third period, out among the galaxies as an awakened child of the stars, will be so awesome and so novel that there is nothing that I could say about it that would mean anything to you, except, perhaps, that it is all reflected rather crudely in some of your primitive mythologies. The craft that you are to assemble during the coming millennium in preparation for this will not be dead like the materials you form today, but alive like tree, flower and wind. You will inspire them with the gift of your consciousness as the Father has inspired me and as I inspire you. Yet all will be one. All will live and breathe with the coherence of a single organism. If you were to insist upon understanding all that is to come with your rational mind, you would be left sleeping far behind in the dust of history long after I pass. For I am a moving being, and my days on earth are numbered. My true kingdom is not of this world, but of a world that lies far beyond all the stars in your night sky. If you will come with me, on our way to eternity we will have plenty of time to visit these star systems together, and you will have a thousand years to enjoy the earth in peace and harmony before we leave. Come, does this not sound like a good plan? Trust in me as you did once long ago. We are alone here in time and space. I am the only consciousness. Surely I am worthy of your trust. Let us be separate no longer, for I can read your heart and I see that you are homesick for a home you cannot remember. That home is my being. You cannot remember it because it is too vast and awesome to fit into any of your present structures of thought. Listen to me, O oh children of the earth. Trust no more in fear and his many lies. Breathe with me the breath of eternal life, the breath that I bring you this day. Your collective creation as a unified awareness center is still to be, but as individuals, the second coming is at hand. And so is the third and the fourth and the fifth and the sixth all the way to the end of your numbers. For I am rising up in your midst like a great wave of irresistible energy. I am rising in the peasants. I am rising in the farmers. I am rising in the factory workers, and the children of every country on the face of the earth. I am rising, surfacing, awakening, with power, with clarity, with love, and with life-giving information. All those who love can feel me this moment, stirring restless in their breasts. Those who do not now deny my expression are those who will inherit the earth. I am the future, yet I am now. In truth, I am none other than you. I am the life that the earth has been courting since prehistoric times. I am the reflection of all my creation. You are a cell in my body, but as is a hologram, you are the whole as well. Your flesh is my flesh, and your blood, my blood. Share in my eternal life, for I am all that ever was, all that is, and all that ever shall be. Let us unite in your reality as we are already united in mine. I have told you to identify with me, but it is even easier than that. Just stop identifying with your own self-images and you will find that what is left is already identified with me, because it is me. 
Do not judge yourselves too harshly in the shadow of your birth, but come, sup with me first at the table of life. Find out who is here to judge. I am the relationship between spirit and matter, between all that is temporal and all that is eternal. I am the pattern that matter conforms to when it comes in contact with being. Flow now into harmony. Adjust your identity patterns to coincide with the archetypal mold that I have prepared specifically for you. It is waiting in my conceptions. If you have faith in me, my design will blow away your limitations like a child wishing upon a dandelion. Listen for the whisper in your heart. You will hear it when your thoughts are still. Focus upon it until it fills your being and becomes the motivational energy behind all your actions. You were not created to wear a scowl or to hide behind the aprons of your past. Cast off these ancient garments and clothe yourselves in the robes I have prepared. They are your new definition roles and they behoove you well. The bride must now dress for the groom, though the time to you has seemed long in coming. In the days to come, your nourishment will be to do the will of the life that sent you, and to accomplish its deeds. The life that rises up within you this very moment contains all the living information needed for the sustenance of your physical body. But the nature of this life information is that it provides the energy needs of the body as it is flowing through. If it is not allowed to flow through, if it is bottled up in concepts and past future orientation, it will be unable to provide you with its nourishment. Life information is the will of the Father. But if that will is not expressed, if it is not translated into action, if it is merely stored away in dusty concepts, then the human body will disease and eventually die. If you would participate with me now in the implementation of my will on earth, Go and heal all that you can in humankind, for in this hour, I appoint you the instruments of my change. Heal by my power of unity. Heal by the strength of your clarity. Heal by the degree and to the degree of your faith in my presence within you. The vibrational harmony of each and every atom, in each and every cell of your interrelated physical bodies, Dancing together in rhythmic entrainment and your own power to direct my awakened intentionality and extend this harmonic dance of vibrational unity to anything you so choose, is a power that in the twinkling of an eye, or the passing of a cloud will transform all before it. When you go about adjusting all manner of disharmonies in the bodies and events of your times, do so by the power of my name, which is the power of my nature. Say then, be whole. Or, may you be made whole. If you say this with consciousness and assurance, it shall be done in matter as it is already done in spirit. As you travel about in the times of later awakenings, take with you few provisions for your needs. Trust that those who are vibrationally attuned will already know that you are coming and have a place prepared for you. Enter there with your peace and let it spread. This will unite all your conscious co-workers in spirit, and send out great waves of peace to the surrounding countryside. Many will feel this and be puzzled as to the reason. Go then among them, and quietly teach them of the changes that are upon your species. Teach them primarily through the way that you are and the way that you perceive. But do not deprive those who are in need of words of that which they desire. When the age that you are helping to usher in is in full bloom, words will no longer be the necessities that they are today, but in this transitional period, there are many who can profit by them. If none will accept your peace in a given area, think no thought of it, but continue on to those areas where you are received graciously. For there will be a few pockets of resistance in places where the powers of materialization are gathering. When you leave such an area of negativity, shake out of your vibrational body every last trace of the limiting conceptions you have encountered. These will be as particles of doubt and fear that will cling to your heart and trouble your understanding if you retain any memory of the experience. As you travel in these times, your way will not always be resistance-free, for the world will still be polarizing. 
But if you have trust in the spirit that guides your every action, you will encounter and inspire far more joy than fear. Your occasional difficulties will be more than compensated for by the widespread revivals you will participate in, often involving whole cities and nations. For these are not to be like the days when you traversed the hills of the Roman Empire, while the world was yet young in spirit and the forces of materialization were at their prime. No, this is a different age, and the earth is ripe for harvest. In this age it shall be the spirit that proves victorious. Nations are already prepared and waiting. Do not trouble yourself with the entry of my hand into human events in areas that do not concern you, but trust that all is unfolding as it should. No one harvests but from seeds that they have sown. Your concern should not be with the old reality, but with the living presence of God. The only condemnation will be on those who do not love the spirit of life, who choose the things of matter and chase after them with evil deeds. It is good to express appreciation for the things of this earth, but if these things of matter come to dominate all of an individual's attention, and assume a greater importance than the very life which grants attention, then that is not good. Whoever shall drink of the waters of earth shall thirst again, and whoever shall eat at the planet's table shall hunger again, but I bring you the nourishment of eternal life. Partake of it and hunger and thirst no more. Sleep is all you remember, perhaps, but do not fear the dawn. When spirit touches matter lightly, the matter responds with five forms such as you have on earth. When it touches matter fully, stars are created. The nuclear reactions that are now being triggered by the increasing proximity of spirit will take an entirely different form after the coming. They will occur under controlled biological conditions within your own bodies. This is already happening occasionally to some of you, though you do not recognize it as such. This and the direct assimilation of starlight are to be the mechanisms of eternal life. All that I am telling you, you know with every cell of your body, with every breath you inhale. I have been telling you these things not only from within, but through various interpreters of one kind or another since you first became objectified in my dreams, since my intentions first began to cast their shadow on time and space. These are not new things to you. Think for a moment. You know all these things. You remember the plans we made, the cautions we issued. You remember existence before the fall. Why imagine that you do not? Wake up. Let me express through you. Put on my awareness. We are one. We have always been one. The earth has been filled. The clay is prepared. I am waking beneath the surface of all that live, to breathe the breath of life, the first breath of life as a single planetary organism. You are children of earth, but from the moment of birth, you are to observe a new relationship with your father of the sons. Come, learn the language we spoke of old, the language of love, the language of light, the language of no misunderstanding. Do you hear my song? Do you hear what I am singing? In this age, my words will be as music, and they will translate into action for all those who move in time. For my life is not still and stationary as are the very best of words. Life is moving and alive, changing, laughing, playing, flowing ever into the new. This is the nature of what I bring. I bring a time of action and adventure. Leave your words in history where they properly belong. You have worshipped reason and Satan through them long enough. Look to me this day. I am the light and the truth. I am the Father you have worshipped in heaven, now come to earth to make my home in your heart. Forget all but the song I am singing in your soul. Be in this moment with me. Open to the life that I am. I bring the burning fire of purification information revelation. Open to all that you are. I bring the annunciation of your birth. It could be now, this very moment. Let everything that you imagine yourself to be drift to a state of rest, and feel me rise up within. I am rising like a spring from the depth of your being, my being, and we are one. 
I am here now I tell you, in your streets, in your marketplaces, in your towns, in your villages. I am watching out of the eyes of babes and the young of heart of every race, station, and creed. Reflect me in all that you are. Bring my awareness and my consciousness into every environment that you construct around yourselves. The days of isolation are ending. Soon all media will proclaim, Rejoice! Rejoice! The Lord has come. Let earth resound the name and reflect the nature. Let Satan be bound and all the prophecies fulfilled. For the Lord walks in the frame of man and sees a planet through his eyes. There is only one of us here in consciousness. It is you, bubbling up in a billion different guises, surfacing to reawaken your unified awareness with a coating of humanity. Can you ease your exploitation of the earth just a little, until you find out who you really are? Can you wait to spend all your resources until you know what you really want? I am that part of you that has woken up. I can assure you, we are here for a purpose. I speak as if we were separate, for in your illusion, you would have it so. But I tell you, there is only one of us here. It is you. Yet you dream still in the spell of matter. Do not allow matter to dictate your future any longer. Go gently in these last days of unconsciousness. Listen to these voices among your dreams. Listen to the whisperings in your heart. We speak of a new way of being. We speak of a new reality. We speak of your awakening as being but a moment away. Does this not make sense to you? Somewhere under all your conceptions and rational convictions, is there not a child sleeping? There is a part of you, I know for it is I, that lies like a thin wisp of certainty, a forgotten shred of simplicity, behind all your sorrow and beyond all your confusion. Be still. Let it expand and fill you with yourself. You know these things in your heart. I look out across the slumbering sea of humanity, and I whisper these words in the night. And I know that I address a great being sleeping still in ignorance of itself. I know that if the wild winter winds of your communication system send tatters or fragments of this message echoing in the darkness, it will still be to the unconscious that I speak. For the conscious have seen the sky start to brighten in the east and have felt the warming spring of eternal life begin to thaw the hardness of their preconceptions. Can you not feel the earth as you approach? Can you not feel her wrap you in her matter? Are your life forms not sufficiently prepared now to receive the blessing definitions that will terminate their larval period? You have told them to multiply and fill the earth, and behold, they walk the entire face of the planet and dominate every habitable landscape. Afterward, a more rapid approach would have made your species grow too quickly and split with inner weakness as a fruit tree splits that has been grown in soil with excessive fertility. A more rapid approach would have left you with cells that may have been prone to every illness that might be encountered on your travels. While you dreamt you were more than one, you grew this species with care. You saw that they were inoculated to dangers that might befall those inexperienced in physical expression. There are presently four and one half billion of them, my lord, each a holoid with an activated physical circuitry identical to the energy networks in your vibrational field. This present civilization only you can cure.